The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. Malik Hill, I'm Joey Tysick. And uh, man, we got some exciting stuff to talk about. We got NFL free agency went kind of crazy, actually. And uh, we got conference championships going on in college basketball. A couple tickets have been punched. More than a couple. A few? I think we're up to like six or seven at Are this we? point. I can't remember. There's so many small conferences but at the beginning. One is more important than the rest at this point, Joey. Well, we'll get to that. I'm excited. Yeah. There's a reason Malik is wearing a specific uh, outfit today. Yeah. But uh, we'll get to it later. A specific we'll- someone is not my enemy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, What is it? The enemy of my enemy is my friend now? Basically. Kind of. Um, So we're going to start with free agency, though, just to get through that. Because there's there's a lot of big moves and a lot of pretty important moves. Even in the NFC North has some pretty crazy stuff going on. Uh, so we pulled up the the PFF free agency tracker. So I think we'll just follow along how they're doing it. And we'll just go uh, by position. Um, quarterback, nothing crazy crazy except for the big one being Kirk Cousins. Going to the ATL. Yeah. Going to the Atlanta Falcons. I've gone back and forth so many times on how I feel about it. Yeah. And I've determined I, I just I won't say anything until I see him play. Yeah. 36 coming off of a bad knee injury. Mm-hmm. Four years, 180. 100 million guaranteed. 100 million guaranteed. Um, They also will get to it, but we'll kind of leak it here. They also signed Darnell Mooney from the Bears. So now, to me, it's a very similar – vibe to the Vikings it's an upgrade at running back it's a downgrade at wide receiver but not crazy I guess because we haven't seen what Drake London can do but Kirk Cousins with Drake London uh as the big play guy similar to a Justin Jefferson definitely not on that level yeah Darnell Mooney as the speed guy similar to what Jordan Addison did Kyle Pitts hopefully we maybe hasn't been unlocked yet maybe we can (laughs) finally get the Kyle Pitts we've all been waiting for similar to a TJ Hawkinson and then B. John Robinson is way better than Alexander Madison and Ty Chandler. So, And they also have Tyler Algier, who has shown he's a more yeah. than serviceable backup guy. Yeah. And Atlanta's defense last year proved they can be pretty good. Um, so, to me, I think it's a cool move. It makes it fun. Atlanta should be able to run the NFC South, in my opinion. Maybe. I mean, yeah, the, things the, have to the go Buccaneers, a little bit right. I, I still think That's if, true. if Baker's still playing good football, yeah, I guess they'll so. be right there. Yeah, that's true. Which, speaking of Baker Mayfield, he also re-signed with the Bucks Three years, $100 million, which isn't bad for him. Um, I'm not surprised by it. I think with Mike Evans re-signing, that indicated to me that Baker was coming back. Because they, they had a pretty good uh, connection. Uh, Ryan Tannehill apparently is still out there. Russell Wilson, Malik's old guy. Dude, I, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't... I can talk about my past love for the Steelers, but yeah, what, this, what happened to Russell Wilson? I just, I just can't. This is a deal that would have made childhood <laughs> Malik a giddy kid. Malik, like three years ago, yeah, <laughs> yeah, signing with the Pittsburgh Steelers for a one-year, one point two million dollar deal. The Broncos ate up all that money. Yeah, <laughs> all that money. Yeah, is that one of the worst trades in NFL history? Easily. Yeah, it, almost top five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably top three. <laughs> Probably top three. Yeah. And then we have a bunch of backups uh, getting signed. Gardner Minshew will be battling, I'm sure, for the starter job. He signed with the Vegas Raiders, two years, $25 million. Jacoby Brissett back with New England on uh, one year, $8 million. I mean, he might have a chance to compete, but they're going to draft somebody. Yeah. Uh, famous Jameis going to the Cleveland Listen, Browns. Deshaun Watson and Jameis Winston in a quarterback yeah, room. Yeah, that's... Does that sound like the beginning of a joke? Yeah. 
you got Deshaun Watson and Jameis Winston in, in a quarterback room. Yeah. It's oh. although the you memes know, will be incredible. Jameis Winston fits kind of right in. He's a he can do basically what Joe Flacco did. I know I'm a big Joe Flacco guy, but Jameis has that ability. He can chuck it around the field, throw a couple interceptions, yeah. throw a couple bombs. I mean, I want to see Jameis get back on the field. I really do. Um, but with Deshaun there, you never know. Um, my boy Tyrod Taylor signs with the Jets, unfortunately. I was just about to say, how, how happy are you about that one, Joe? <laughs> I mean. He wants to stay in New York. It is what it is. Yeah. But, and who knows with the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, we're not going to get into it, but he's looking for a government job potentially. Is Tyrod Taylor the only quarterback to play for all three New York teams? I just realized this. He was a Bill, he was a Giant, and now he's a Jet. Yeah. I don't know if any other quarterback probably, has done that. That's a landmark. Probably not. Good for you, Tyrod. Interesting. He's been all over the place, but uh, he always he always does solid. Yeah. Um, the replacement for Kirk Cousins. Are you are you are you ready for this? Sam Darnold. No, there's no drums. There's no exciting. No. Get more excited for Sam Darnold. I still think they're gonna make some sort of move in the draft. They're a lot of people think of J.J. McCarthy, potentially. They're, they're like, what, 13th or something? Yeah, people think they're going to move up. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting to see if they do or if they don't. Um, maybe they give Sam Darnold a one-year shot at it. I, Listen. I don't know. Sam Darnold will not be the full-year starter for the Minnesota Vikings. They do still have Nick Mullins on the roster if they needed to at the moment. Um, and then Drew Locke, the new New York Giants quarterback, until they draft somebody. Um, kind of surprising, but not Daniel Jones fully. is still there. Isn't that crazy? No, he got released. From what I saw, he got released. I have not seen breaking news about Daniel Jones getting released. Maybe it was a fake me, account. I was about to say, let Twitter, me check this really quick. Twitter during free agency time is tough to follow because there's a lot of fake accounts just reporting stuff. Daniel Jones has not been released. <laughs> I was about to say, you you threw me off okay. with that one. Okay. But he's He's still there. That's good. That would have been a little surprising. Yeah, I'm sure New I'm sure New York is considering some things. But, yeah, yeah, right. So, okay, that's good then. Um, other guys still out there. Tyler Huntley, Josh Dobbs, Mason Rudolph. Big whoop. Um, backups. Give Josh somewhat. Dobbs more respect, okay? I mean He did some he did some impressive things. And then Sandlot he, football come he, just he jumping did into the some lineup. Impressive things and then he did some not so impressive things. Well, that's what happens when you jump in the lineup and play Sandlot football. Yeah. But the fact that he did it well for at least two games. Right. Got to give him credit. True. All right. On to the running backs, which was probably the craziest running back market I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, last couple of years have been pretty wild with running backs about people not wanting to pay running backs, undervaluing running backs. So when they all hit free agency this year, teams went crazy. Um, so starting right at the top, the Philadelphia Eagles got rid of DeAndre Swift. And they are replacing him with a one Saquon Barkley. They're still going for the Super Bowl, in yeah. my opinion. Um, what do you think about Saquon to the Eagles? On paper, it is just uh, absolutely nasty offense that most defenses should be afraid of. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think beyond that, their uh, secondary still might be dis disgustingly horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, will you be able to trust any linebacker? Right. And their D-line has a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. But outside of Hassan Reddick, like, who's the guy? Yeah. Because the Georgia dudes are still growing. Mm -hmm. So they still have some holes to fill. Yeah. Offense could be exciting, and we'll have to see what they're play calling because things just went off the rails last year. Yeah, I was going to say their offense took a step back last year, and yeah. it was supposed to be better. But And DeAndre Swift actually pl played pretty really well, mm -hmm. which was the funny part. But Yeah. And Saquon, he's hard to, to figure out because, obviously, he plays for the Giants, which aren't a good team. But there was times where he didn't look as good um, as he has. Um, but there's also times that you've seen flashes of what he's capable of. So it's hard to say exactly where he's at right now, and he's still a little bit injury-prone. But hopefully for the Eagles, he'll take a little pressure off of Jalen Hurts having to run the ball that much more. Um, then the big one that affects the Lions a little bit. Josh Jacobs, four years, $48 million to Green Bay. We get to see Josh Jacobs twice a year, which he was like one of the few running backs to have a good game against the Lions this year, yeah. this past year. 
Um, they straight up released Aaron Jones off of that too, uh, which to me was pretty wild. I thought last year they had talked a big deal about Aaron Jones, especially the way he finished off the season. Now, obviously, you know, you get Josh Jacobs. He's a lot younger, so it, it makes sense, but it was just a little bit surprising. Um, do you think this makes Green Bay even more scary than they already Along with their other were? free agent signings, uh, they've improved. Yeah. Yeah, they've definitely improved. Them and the Lions are going to be fighting Yeah, for hopefully a few years. And Jacobs is another one of those bowling ball type running backs. He's fast, but he's strong. Yeah. Also a little bit elusive. Does a little bit of everything. Watching him and David Montgomery mm-hmm. and Jameer. Jameer Gibbs, all those running backs in one game is going to be something to see. Right. It's going to be weird to see a new running back in Green Bay because Aaron Jones has been there for a little while. Um, but should be fun. Um, then the, kind of the big news that came out yesterday, Derek Henry, no longer a Titan. He's with the Baltimore Ravens for two years, $16 million. Do you think this gets the Ravens over the hump that they've been missing? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure because something different seems to go wrong every time they get in the playoffs mm-hmm. and have some hype. Right. He should be able to take all the pressure off of Lamar when it comes to him running all the time. But Lamar started running less last year, mm-hmm. even though he still like leads the league in quarterback rushing yards since he came in the league. But yeah. that's just because of his natural talent. Mm-hmm. Derrick Henry should take the pressure off of the passing offense and makes things easier. Right. He really should. Yeah. And uh, Lamar doesn't get much of the goal line work as a, run, as a quarterback. So Derek there was a Henry, lot of Gus Edwards, and he did a good job. Yeah, so Derrick Henry will, will be the guy that punches it in. It's going to be curious to see what they do for their their backup because they did release Gus Edwards, um, and they so now they have Justice Hill, Keaton Mitchell, J.K. Dobbins is still out there. I I doubt they're going to resign him. Obviously, yeah. but I think with Justice Hill and Keaton Mitchell, I think they're, they're that's just pretty tandem. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then another kind of surprising one: Tony Pollard going to the Titans. Yeah. That feels yeah. bad because it, is it I don't know what Tennessee is thinking. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I've said before I don't trust them as an organization. Yeah. I I don't know. Especially when I don't know if you agree with me or not, but it felt like Ty J Spears was really good last year. They could have drafted another running back. Yeah. And saved some money. <laughs> right. Like, and if they're like in a rebuild, which it seems like they may be, mm-hmm. why give this money to Tony But Tony Pollard is still young. Right. He's like 26, 27. Yeah. But Ty J Spears outperformed Derrick Henry in a lot of games. So, like, they have a guy on their roster, and now they're going to split those two guys up with carries? I don't know. Yeah, it's a weird one. Um, another weird one, Austin Eckler with the Washington Commanders. I think he might have a hard fall off. Yeah. Like a kind of Todd Gurley-esque. Mm-hmm. I thought when Todd Gurley went to the Falcons, I thought he was about to have a resurgence, mm-hmm. and it was over just like that. Yeah. I, I hope it doesn't happen. I hope he does well, but yeah, the, the other, injuries, he he's looks slower. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The other thing, too, that I hope he doesn't ruin Brian Robinson's growth. That's the hard part because he can fill in somewhat of an Antonio Gibson role where the pass-catching guy, but Antonio Gibson wasn't dipping into too much of uh, Brian Robinson's role, whereas Austin Eckler, just because of face value, might dip into more of that. So Don't they still have J.D. McKissick, too? He was like their third down back. I don't know if he's there anymore. I, okay. I don't know. I remember he, he was actually like a piece they used in right. the offense, too. Um, so it's it, that's another weird move, especially because they're, they're a young team. Um, so to get a veteran guy that's kind of had his issue, especially last year, didn't play as well, is interesting. Um, and then DeAndre Swift, who you mentioned got released by the Eagles. This is one of the deals overall that have been done that I'm not a fan of. Yeah, it's a weird one. I don't understand. Mm-hmm. That O-line in Chicago, I, I don't know how he's going to get loose and yep. find holes. I, I just don't. Justin so, Fields could help with, like, yeah. read options and stuff, but, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so twice a year, the Lions will get to prove to prove why we got rid of DeAndre Swift. And I, I'm not trying to be, like, a DeAndre Swift hater, but he's good, some people but. overly defended him. Um, but now he's going to be with the Bears. So we'll get to see him twice a year, which will be fun. Um, and who knows what the Bears are doing because they have Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson already too. So I don't know how their backfield's going to get split up, if they're going to trade one of those guys or what's going to happen. Um, J.K. Dobbins is still out there. 
Devin Singletary, unfortunately, signing with the Giants. The Giants better draft a running back. Yeah. And they better hit mm -hmm. because this can't be your only option. Well, you better hit on Singletary somebody. Singletary played pretty good last year, but who's the backup? He, you have to have an elite running back to run. Was Matt, this was, line. Wasn't Matt Breida their backup yes. last year? You got to have. Come on, you got to draft, yeah. and you better hit. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. Um, Gus Edwards signed with the Chargers. Jim Harbaugh style running back. Yeah, and I Makes still sense. wouldn't put it past them trying to get Blake Corum or something. Yeah. Um. So that's a that's a decent move for them. AJ Dillon's still out there. Zach Moss signing with the Cincinnati Bengals is kind of interesting. It's not bad. Um, Him and um, Chase Brown. Yeah, Chase Brown. Yeah, it keeps them kind of a kind of that two headed monster of the boomer and the speedster. Uh, Deonta Foreman's still out there. Um, Antonio Gibson signed a three year deal with New England. I didn't know it was three years. Um, Eleven million, whatever numbers don't matter. That's an okay backup role. Uh, Who's the running back in New England? What's his name? Ramondre Stevenson. I think that's a pretty decent combo mm -hmm. with Antonio being like more of the pass catching. Yeah, scat I, think, guy. I think they want to take a little bit of off of Ramondre Stevenson's yeah. role. And we know New England loves to do checkdowns and stuff with running backs. Um, DJ Dallas signed with Arizona. Cool. <laughs> All right, moving on to the wide receivers. Nothing crazy. There's still a lot of wide receivers out there. Should we just start picking out like the notable guys? Yeah. So, so we don't like dragging. Yeah. Like so that. I was just going to mention T. Higgins got franchised. He's requested a trade. So that's mm -hmm. one to watch out for, which will be interesting. Michael Pittman re signed with the Colts, three years, 70 million. Uh, Mike Evans, like we said, two years, 41 to Rigo with Tampa Bay. Darnell Mooney is now with Atlanta. Gabe Davis is with Jacksonville. Kendrick Bourne re signed with New England. And then Noah Brown resigned with Houston's actually not. Josh Reynolds bad. is a free agent. The Lions haven't picked him up. Yep, he's still a free agent. Devin Duvernay uh, signed with yeah, Jacksonville. Donovan Peoples Jones also out there. Okay. Uh, Deontay Johnson just got traded to the Panthers yesterday, which feels bad. But I mean, it. it whatever. <laughs> Bryce Young needs more help. Yeah. But if he's getting crushed every other snap, <laughs> Deontay Johnson might not even help. They, he just he needs a new O line, right? He needs some guys he can trust back there. Mm -hmm. uh, other guys that are out there: Marquise Brown, Calvin Ridley, Odell Beckham Jr., Tyler Boyd, Curtis Samuel, DJ Chark, Michael Thomas, Josh Reynolds, like you mentioned, uh, KJ Osborne, Nick Westbrook, Akine. If I was the Lions, I'd offer Tyler Boyd. You think so? Yeah, I think he he's better than Josh Reynolds in my opinion. My I only, think he could be a really good third receiver. My only problem with Tyler Boyd is he's more of that slot kind of guy. And I feel like we need a bigger body like Josh Reynolds type of guy. I, that's just my feeling. But, I mean, I could be wrong. But I would even entertain going back to DJ Chark, to be honest. I wouldn't hate him coming back. I wouldn't hate it, but I, I don't know if it improves anything. Yeah. I think it's just kind of like a yeah, side to side. Mm -hmm. He's just faster than Josh Reynolds. That's right. about it. So, I don't know. But I don't know if there's anybody that's available that really pushes us over the top. Some people are saying Calvin Ridley, but I don't know. I'm don't, sure he wants a lot of money in the Lions. Probably wouldn't want to give it to him. Yeah, and I don't know if he's going to fit into our scheme necessarily. Um, I don't know. Is there any of those that you wanted to mention? Just figured I'd rattle through them real quick. Uh, it would be nice if the Lions could trade for T. Higgins, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be amazing if it, if they could pull it off. Yeah, Cincinnati has all the leeway in that trade, so I I feel like they're gonna play hardball. So you'd have to really overpay. Yeah, I think Darno movies Darno Mooney is a bit of an overpay. Yeah, and that's a pricey one. Him and Gabe Davis getting the exact same yeah. money. Gabe Davis, I can understand a little bit more because mm -hmm. Jacksonville needs that type of like deep ball guy. Right, but, but it, it yeah. still feels like a lot for those guys a little bit not sure all right moving on to tight ends really quick we got dalton schultz resigning with the texans hunter henry back with the patriots Noah fan back with the seahawks oh i didn't know gerald everett signed with the bears so that was a solid signing for them that was, did. All, that was all right so what are they doing with cole Komet? he's still there i see i assume that he is running two he's here just having two tight ends okay um mike gesicki with the Bengals seems not bad um, I know they kept Drew Sample. How do you feel about the? A lot of people thought that Johnny Smith to the Dolphins was a big one. 
I think Jonu Smith to Miami is interesting. I'm more interested in Irv Smith to Kansas City. Okay. Because he is You think he's an upgrade over very Noah athletic. Gray? I think a lot of guys going to Kansas City just unlock something. And if you look at what he w- was at Alabama, yeah. He could be such a good balance off of what uh Travis Kelsey does. Mhm. And I, I don't know. I just, I'm very interested in that Irv Smith to Kansas City move. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. Offensive tackles didn't really make too many moves. There's a lot of guys out there still. Um, let's see. Centers, nothing. Well, Tyler Biotish to the Commanders. Interesting. Uh, guards got paid this offseason. Yeah. That was kind of the Robert Hunt five years a hundred to Carolina. That I mean, Bryce Young does need help, but yeah. geez, that's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Five years, 100 mil. Mm-hmm. He better be elite. Right. Uh, Jonah Jackson signed with the Los Angeles Rams, three years, 51 million. Good for him. Do you feel like that's good that they let him walk? They did, they they weren't going to pay him three years, 51. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it just you seems can pay like him that money. way too much. Exactly. Uh, we did re-sign Graham Glasgow, three years, 20 million, yeah. which feels much more affordable. You also got um, who's the other? You got Skipper back. Yeah, Dan Skipper yeah. resigned. Um, yeah. So there's still a lot of other guards that are out there that could be interesting. And then we get to the defensive side of the ball. We got re, uh, Chris Jones, five years, 159 million with Kansas City. Crazy part is he's worth it when he's at the top of his game. It's insane. He's unstoppable. Yeah. Uh, Justin Matabuke resigned with the Ravens, which is unfortunate because I would have liked him on. Uh, the Lions, uh, Christian Wilkins. That one, Christian Wilkins hurts. Signed with the Vegas Raiders, yeah. four years, one hundred and ten million. That's a lot of That's money, a, though. The, him and Max Crosby. Yeah, <laughs> it's a crazy combo. Uh, Leonard Williams resigned with Seattle. DJ Reader is out there, who the Lions are yeah. supposed to meet with. He is tomorrow. visiting tomorrow. Yeah, so that's a good one to watch out for. Uh, Grover Stewart resigned with the Colts. Fletcher Cox finally retired. You said that like you wanted him to retire. Well, he's been Let in the, the man live forever, the dream, man. Let him mentor the young guys. Yeah, he, I mean he's been good. He's great. Listen, Brandon Graham is, is still around. I'm yeah, pretty sure. I know he did. He's he going on forever. Yeah, uh, Javon Kinlaw uh, signed with the Jets on a one year deal. Um, Ashawn Robinson signing a three year deal with the Panthers. I seriously doubt he does anything in Carolina. Sorry, <laughs> Ashawn. I just I don't see it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Bilal Nichols signed with the Cardinals, three years, twenty one million. Um, that's all the notable guys that I could think of. Yeah. Let's go to the edge. Josh Allen franchise tag. We talked about that. I believe one, one year, 24 million. Here's the big one. And I want to get your opinion on Brian Burns. He was franchise tagged by the Panthers one year, 24 million and traded to the giants for bits and pieces. Basically uh, last year, the Carolina Panthers wanted like three first round picks and a bunch of stuff. The Giants, I think, got a deal on Brian Burns. Would you have liked the Lions to go after that? I mean, yes. Not I mean, yes. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. It, now, you still have to sign him to a long year deal eventually. True. Um, But the Giants got an elite pass rusher along yeah. with Kayvon Thibodeau, which helps Kayvon and Dexter, and Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence. Yeah. People forget, like, the Giants' defense is pretty good, actually. Yeah. Um, their offense is abysmal, but their defense actually could be pretty good. That was the one that kind of hurt a little bit. And then the one that came in, was it late yesterday? Yeah. Daniil Hunter signed with Houston, two years, $49 million. Another big one for Houston. Yeah. Another one that the Lions would have loved to have. So now Daniil Hunter getting to pair up with Will Anderson. That's another scary one. Um, Bryce Huff signing with Philadelphia, three years, 51. Uh, Jonathan Greenard. Uh, Grenard. Grenard, sorry. Get it, get it right. That was aggressive. Grenard. <laughs> I heard Greenard and it just said sorry. something off in my head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Four years with Minnesota. Um, let's see. Zadarius Smith re-signed with Cleveland. Josh Uche re-signed with uh, New England. Leonard Floyd signing with the 49ers. Um, Let, yeah, there's the let's Brandon just Graham. let's jump to a signing that most likely will end up being nothing. Uh, Marcus Davenport, to one year, Detroit. six point five with Detroit. Yeah, 
this is a flyer I honestly don't really understand. Mm-hmm. Like he was a high draft pick. The the Saints took a shot on him. Yeah. And it really didn't work out. Mm-hmm. I guess they're just betting on what he used to have. Yeah, if they if he can stay healthy, sure. The thing that stinks is it's very it's it's like the exact same thing as Emmanuel Mosley, where you're just hoping that he can come back and be healthy yeah. for once. So that's a little bit spooky. Uh, there's a lot of other good guys that are out there that I think is interesting. Clayus Campbell, just as a veteran, just to have. Kyle Van Noy, uh, DJ Wanham, Bud For, Dupree. Former top pick Cleland Farrell. <laughs> yeah, he signed with Washington. Who was, signed, who was a top five pick because of leadership. Yeah. <laughs> Shouts out to that era of the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Picking guys because of leadership in the top five. Yeah. Um, moving over to linebacker. Patrick Queen signing with uh, rival he Pittsburgh Steelers. Up. Yeah. Kind of Lam- surprising. Lamar Jackson, he tweeted this about Patrick Queen and a few other guys saying you're dead to me <laughs> <laughs> because they jumped to rivals. <laughs> wow. Uh, I love these sp- sports hate and mm-hmm. sports intensity Yeah, better than any other. Um, Aziz Alshair signed with Houston three years. I think that's actually pretty good. If he good. can stay healthy, he's actually all right. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it that – I needed to go over for that. Um, and then cornerback, Jalen Johnson, unfortunately, I think we talked about it, re-signed with the Bears. Legereus Sneed is still out there, but uh, they want to trade. Um, where is Sean Murphy Bunting going to the Cardinals? Manuel Mosley coming back to the Lions on another one-year deal, which is exactly what I wanted. Give him one more chance. Um, uh, let's get to the guys. Let's Jeff Okuda? To, to the Texans? Not what I was talking about. Another uh, former top three pick that shouldn't yeah. have happened because of that guy that had the pencil in his ear. We're not gonna even gonna say his name. <laughs> yeah. All right. But we'll get we'll get to the line. There was moves. a trade and a signing. Yes. Two players. Mm-hmm. There have been varying opinions in Lions Nation about these uh, moves. Yeah. Tell the people how you feel. First of all, about the trade. Tampa Bay trades Carlton Davis to Detroit for a third. Yes. And, and then I think Detroit got back a sixth. We got, I think, a fifth and a sixth yeah. or something, or two sixths. Um, I'm okay with it. His production shows that it's pretty he, good. Yeah, he'll he'll be the number one for the for Detroit. Yes. Um, I think the confusing part though for a lot of people is he. A lot of people are comparing his stats to Lejarius Sneed um, because they're similar in uh, quarterback rating when playing man. The only problem with those stats is that. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think, were one of the lowest man coverage teams in the NFL. So those numbers are a little bit more skewed than you think. Uh, Legere Sneed, we also saw play a lot of man in the playoffs last year, and he played really well. Um, so I don't think Carlton Davis is going to be Legere Sneed like some people might think at a cheaper discount. Um, but do I like that we made a move? Yes. I, I like that we did something. They upgraded. Right. Even if it's slightly, it's an upgrade. They addressed the position. We could still draft a cornerback, I think. Um, in It's a good chance they will. Yeah. Some round. And then we did sign another cornerback, a feisty Amik Robertson. Yeah. Now, he's he's about 5'9 at, at, <laughs> yeah. at most, like 195 pounds at best. Yes. But you watch his highlights, and he's just... Mm-hmm. He's a firecracker. Yeah, and everybody out of Raiders camp has given him high praise that he's a motor. He'll yeah. miss on plays, which Listen, is scary. If he gets beat, he's going to come back and either make a play or right. he's going to do something that catches your attention. Yeah, the, Sometimes good, sometimes very good. I mean, sometimes bad. The thing that hurts me, though, that with that is that in most defenses, if you make a mistake, that's okay. And the Lions... In the Lions, excuse me, the Lions defense, if you make a mistake, it usually turns into like a touchdown. But here's my thing with Amik Robertson. At least he has a track record of making plays. Yeah. Kendall Vildor hasn't made a play. True. That's true. Like, I, I, I have belief and faith that Amik Robertson catches that pick. Mm-hmm. Sorry for bringing it up. Yeah. But in the 49ers game, I'm sure Amik Robertson probably makes that play. Mm-hmm. He's a better quarter than Ken- Kendall Vildor. Yeah. Now, like, how much better is he than Jerry Jacobs? Who knows? Right. Jerry Jacobs became an absolute villain for the Lions for a good portion of the season, mm-hmm. and he actually made some plays. Right, he had some picks. Mm-hmm. Now he get he got burned a lot of the time when he didn't get picks. Yeah. So, yeah. Thoughts on Amik Robertson outside of that? Just 
I don't know. I'm okay with it. Again, addressing the position, just giving more depth at some point is totally fine with me. Um, Oh, I didn't realize Jordan Poyer signed with the Dolphins. Yep, he jumped. He jumped to a rival too. Interesting. Jadavious White is still out there, right? Jadavious White. Yeah, I believe so. That'd be. That's another one that it would be nice. I know he's been a little banged up recently, but um, so I'll go over the Lions uh, stuff really quick, and then we'll get into college football. So Lions in this offseason, they released Tracy Walker. They re-signed Michael Badgley, re-signed Jalen Reeves Maven, re-signed Zonovan Knight, re-signed Shane Zilstra, re-signed Emmanuel Mosley, uh, Graham Glasgow, signed Marcus Davenport, got Carlton Davis, Amik Robertson, and re-signed Dan Skipper. So far, what would you give them as a grade? I would give them a B. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's good. I don't think there's any great. I don't think they like went down in quality on anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they addressed a position like you said that needed to be addressed. Slight upgrade. They brought back Graham Glasgow. They got Skipper back. Some culture guys, guys that know what is needs to be done. Yeah. Um, CJ Gardner Johnson signed with the Eagles. Yes. I don't think the Lions needed him. That's mm-hmm. fine. So, yeah, there's still moves to be made, but decent overall. Yeah. I'd give it a B. I think I'm going to go C+. Plus, um, and I'm just – I wanted them to make a big splash. And it, I know it's kind of become – it's not what Brad Holmes does, so I'm not surprised that they didn't. I like that they still kind of got a close to top-tier guy, depending on how you feel about Carlton Davis, um, that they went that route, that they sort of took a risk, I guess. Um but I just wanted them to take bigger steps. We're only going to be Super Bowl relevant for so many years. I know people think that it can be a long process, that we can be there for years, which technically could happen, but you never know. Um, so for me, I would have rather them made just a little bit bigger splash. Yeah, your secondary went from bad to potentially average. Right. And yeah. that is a step in the right direction. Yeah, and it's still basically just the cornerback position that's the problem. The safeties should be fine. The safeties should be yeah. good. Um but it again, kind of a wait and yeah. see kind of moment. One more mention of a signing before we move on. Okay. You mentioned Josh Jacobs to the Packers. Mm-hmm. Got to mention, probably the best safety signing so far. Oh yeah, Xavier McKinney to the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I'm gonna bolster their defense. Yeah, getting Josh Jacobs and Xavier McKinney, I think, is a big, big swing. Yeah, and they're out with uh, Darnell Savage. He would. Yeah. To the Bengals or something? Arnold Savage went to the Jaguars. Oh, that yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, Geno Stone went from the Ravens to the Bengals. Yeah. Which I think Lamar Jackson also had a tweet about him saying yeah, you're that, dead to me. He was really good for them last year. Yeah. So, yeah. All righty. College basketball time. We only got 27 minutes, 25. All Should right. I bring my team up now? Yes. That's what I was going to say. Joey? It's been a long, hard road. I w- I became a Oakland University student in 2014. From 2014 to 2018, I watched four different teams that could have made the tournament. Mm-hmm. None of them did. I saw Kay Felder, one of the best players in, uh, in Oakland history, honestly. Mm-hmm. An absolute dog. Almost upset Michigan State. Uh... Probably the best team can't be had in the past decade or so. I would say so. They got upset in the first round or the second round of the Horizon League tournament. That was like 2016. Mm -hmm. He had Kendrick Nunn, one of the leaders in scoring in the country, an absolute bucket. The team got close, couldn't get over the hump. I've made it known that Greg Campy has pissed me off (laughs) and been my enemy for years because I've seen him waste too many teams. Full of high level all conference players mm-hmm. and two guys that were borderline like all American level players. I was a little emotional after this one <laughs> because for the first time in a decade, over a decade, mm-hmm. Oakland University has made the NCAA tournament. Yes, they have. They won their three conference tournament games in different ways. The first game, which I was at, they beat IPFW at home. Rocket mm-hmm. Watts led them in scoring, had 18 points. Uh, he had an ankle sprain at the end of that game. Yeah. 
So he only played three minutes the next game and didn't play in the conference championship. Mm-hmm. They barely won the next game. Jack's, Jack Golke hit seven threes, mm-hmm. had 21 points. And they went back and forth all game long with Milwaukee. Yep. But the conference player of the year emerged. Trey Townsend, kid mm-hmm. from Oxford. Local guy. Watch him play in high school. Another guy to add to the list of all time Oakland players. Mm-hmm. 38 points. Horizon player of the year. Horizon player of the year. 38 points, 11 rebounds, and five assists. Yeah. In the conference championship game mm-hmm. to help Oakland get over the hump. Crazy. Man. And they barely Oakland won. did it. And they and they barely won. <laughs> barely won Listen, again. Listen, man, the the their defensive strategy of just they kept letting them get in the paint over and over and over again. Yeah. And the I don't complain about referees in any sport, but the way the refs were calling to start the second half, Oakland had six fouls to Milwaukee zero. Yeah. But then it started to balance out more. Mm-hmm. They got into more of a flow. And then Trey Townsend just got into a, listen, yeah, an absolute zone. Mm-hmm. So wherever he got the ball, whether it was at the top of the key, on either side of the free throw line, in the post, he figured out his way into the paint and just made easy shots. Yeah. And he hit his free throws. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm proud of Oakland University, the Golden Grizzlies. <laughs> the other thing that people don't realize too, as the number one seed, Oakland had to beat three twenty win teams. Yeah, you don't the see top that very. Six, the top six teams in the Horizon. Yeah, all had like winning records in the conference. Yeah, you don't see that very often in conference tournaments. So for them to do that and beat all those teams that are good was pretty pretty yeah, admirable. This this being the team that got it done was pretty special, especially since. I know assistant coach Michael Covington. I know Rocket Watts, former Michigan State player, now mm-hmm. Oakland player, in his last year of college basketball. Yeah. I went there. I have basically family there. Mm-hmm. This is – it means a lot. Yeah. So, Greg Campy, you are no longer my enemy. And what do they get rewarded with, Malik? A we don't know. Seed. We don't know yet, but, yes, a 14 seed. They don't have to battle it out in the first four. They don't get that kind of disrespect. Yeah. They'll get a 14 seed. It'll most likely be a tough matchup in the first round. Yeah, I'm going to have to just reiterate. I know I already told you, but the three seeds right now projected. Baylor, former champion not too long ago. Yeah. Blue Bloods, Duke and Kentucky. Yeah. And Iowa State, who is an emerging Big 12 team. Yeah. The last couple of years, I think Kentucky is like the one where I I won't yeah, pick. Them get up. raced out. The I'll, door. I will sadly pick Kentucky, yeah. but every other team, every other has team. weak spots. Listen, okay. Baylor has shown stretches where their yes. youth comes out. Yeah. even with the grad transfers they brought in mm-hmm. with Ray J. Dennis and the other the name of the other guard is slipping my mind, but they brought in uh, veteran guys that have also had shooting slumps. Mm-hmm. There are times where they chuck threes too much. They depend too much on Jacoby Walter, who won Big 12 Freshman of the Year. Yeah. And they would drop some games mm-hmm. that they most likely should have won. Yeah. So they got some weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Duke is playing well. Yeah. They're playing I'm not pretty good. Dude, 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 they dude, just don't. They beat, yeah. they beat everybody except North Carolina right yeah. now. But listen, even Duke has weak spots. Who knows? Yes. We, we've seen crazier things. And they could be at Iowa State. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to come. Iowa State is tough. T.J. Altsberger is a hell of a coach. Yeah. They got some good players. I don't think they have any, like, high, high, high level. No. They're just, like, a they're, really quality team. They're a defensive team. First. Yes. So Listen, if Golke and Blake Lampman start hitting threes. That's what I was going to say. As much as people are talking yeah. about Trey Townsend, and he's been great. He's been incredible for them. I think Golke and Lampman are the keys to making a run. They got two guys that can hit five plus three. Exactly. At what, any time. What do we always talk about t- come tournament time? Seniors and threes. Yes. Veterans and threes. That's that's the way to make an upset. Yeah. And then you have DQ Cole, mm-hmm. Pontiac own DQ Cole. Yeah. Who is a bucket getter and can go on a run by himself if he needs to. And off the bench, you have a wild card in Rocket Watts mm-hmm. at 18 points in the first round of the conference tournament. Yeah. You have several options of guys that can get you buckets, hit threes, and get you points in the paint. Right. Yeah. yeah. I haven't even mentioned Chris Conway, who had a very good tournament himself, has improved in every way. Very good post player. So watch out for the Golden Grizzlies. Yeah. They have a chance, depending on what happens. Yeah. 
best team in Michigan this year. You might not be wrong. To be honest, we'll find out tomorrow. Yes. Um, all right. Let's go with the, the tickets that have been punched so far. There's actually way more than I thought. You what said is, six. There's like eight ten? to ten. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what we got? In the A-Sun, Stetson has won. Yeah. I think that was their first time since like 2003 mm-hmm. that they've made it. Yeah. they The way they won, it was really fun. I think there didn't that wasn't that the game where their guard scored like forty three points. It might have been. I'm pretty sure their their guard went nuts in the championship game, mm-hmm. and the fans stormed the court. Yeah, it's their first time making it in like twenty years. Yeah, so good for Stetson. Um, Longwood, Longwood, beat, yeah, Longwood beat won the Big South. Jeez, um, that was another surprising one. They were the like fifth or sixth seed, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, Charleston took down the CAA. That's back to back tournaments for them. I think so. Um, but they've definitely been in it in recent years. Uh, like we just said, Oakland winning the horizon. Congrats. Uh, Missouri Valley, the big one, Drake taking down Indiana state, Listen, man, Tucker, Tucker DeVries. That kid is tough. And unfortunately, Indiana state is now on a bubble. Yeah. They're, it might be an IT, like a top seed in it team. Yeah. Hopefully they make it. There's still a chance, but yeah, we will, we will talk Robbie Avila whenever, whenever we can. Yes. Um, the Northeast, this was the big one last night. Wagner taking down Merrimack. This is the ups- this is the upset of March so far. Yeah, Merrimack. They had Jordan DeKirk, yeah, the conference player of the year. He didn't have a I, great game. They I didn't think, shoot very well. Wasn't Wagner like fourteen and sixteen or something like that? Aren't they under five hundred? They were either like fifteen and Just sixteen. Right. They were like the sixth or seventh seed in the tournament. Yeah. They had seven healthy players. Mm-hmm. It was at Merrimack. Yeah, <laughs> everything went against Wagner. Right, and Merrimack scored forty seven points. So crazy for what Mel Wagner, those guys were really emotional after that win because it's kind of like a miracle run for them getting to the tournament. Right. Um, Moorhead State coming out of Ohio Valley. Um, and then Samford running the Southern. Yeah, their first time since 2000. They've had a really good season. South Dakota State winning the Summit League. Yeah. Uh, James Madison making it in, which is cool. Sun I, I Belt. Be, aren't they 29 and 3? I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they they ran through the Sun Belt. Like we said, they at one point they were ranked. They might be the trendiest upset pick when it comes time. Yeah, do you know what their seed line is at right now? I, I'm not I, sure. I'm guessing they're going to be around like a 12 maybe yeah. at the lowest. Mm-hmm. Because that how much they just ran the table yeah. during the season. Yeah. And then out of the West Coast, this was the big one last night. St. Saint Saint Mary's, Mary's knocking off Gonzaga. They got it done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which they they went back and forth on the season because I think St. Mary's beat them the first time, Gonzaga beat them the most recent time. I think so. And then St. Mary's won last night. Yeah, St. Mary's only lost like two games in conference play. Yeah. Gonzaga, this might be Gonzaga's lowest seed in a long time. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to be like a six or seven seed at best. Yeah, I would think so. Um, so now we got a ton of the Power Five going on right now. Um, a couple of the smaller conferences finishing up um, either tonight or this weekend. Um what conference do you want to talk about real quick? We'll go through each one really quick of the big ones. But I, I'd say let's talk the big, the biggest, the best one to start the Big Twelve. Okay, they're the best conference in basketball. Mm-hmm. They had Houston come in from the American and instantly show they were a, a high level top three team in the country. They're kind of like a new blue blood. Yep. But listen. You got one, two, three, four, five, six teams that all finished with a winning record in, in division yeah. or in conference. You mm-hmm. had two teams that split nine and nine, Texas and, and uh, TCU. Mm-hmm. This is an interesting conference right here. Yeah. And I've, at least I think three or four, maybe five teams could win it, mm-hmm. depending on if the right team goes on a run. Yeah. Um, today we had uh, BYU knock off UCF. Um, Your UCF Knights. Yeah, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> I figured BYU would give them trouble, though. Yeah. Um, TCU, Oklahoma should be an interesting one. Texas, Kansas State, and Cincinnati, Kansas. Watch out for that one tonight. Yeah. Uh, Kansas without uh, McCullers and Dickinson. So there's a chance Cincinnati could pull out the upset. Um, let's just make predictions on each one. Who do you think comes out of the Big 12? If they don't have Hunter Dickinson... And I don't know how long Kevin McCullough is out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with a bit of a swing. I'm going to say Texas Tech. I like Texas Tech, too. Listen. I don't think I'm going to pick them to win, but I would. I say they have a chance to do stuff. Uh, I'm a big Pop Isaacs fan. 
Mm-hmm. He's averaged 16 a game this year. Only 30% from three, but he's a better shooter than that. Yeah. He can shoot from deep, and when he gets going, he's hard to stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Toussaint is a really good floor general. And the overall, they've just got a, like, a real gritty veteran team. Yeah. With like, they got some shooters. They got some guys that can play defense, rebound, guys that can slash. They've, they've, they're a well balanced team. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just, I like the way they play. Yeah. I'm also going to go with the team that I like the way that they play. I'm going to learn my lesson in the tournament. I'm not going to pick them to go very far, I don't think, in the tournament. But I really like Iowa State. I just like the way they play. They're gritty. They're tough. They slow people down. They play the right way, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but they have uh, Tam and Limsey. Lipsy, who's their guard, and he's a good shooter, plays defense. Maybe like, he was probably the best point guard in the conference. Yeah. I, actually, I'm, Jamal Shedd was the yeah. best point guard yeah, in the yeah, conference. Yeah. Probably second best. Mm-hmm. And they're not like, like in the past, Iowa State hasn't been a great shooting team, but they are they have some decent shooters that can catch fire at times. So I think they have a chance to make it out. Um, so I'd go with them. But they're a team that they just blow certain games, and I don't understand yeah. why. So I could see them winning the Big 12 and then getting out earlier than expected in the big dance. All right. Um, big 12, which... Do you have somewhere else you want to uh, go? We can go, after? A- we can go ACC. Okay. ACC is also an interesting one. Yeah. Um, do you see anybody knocking off North Carolina? I think Duke wins the tournament. Okay. Yeah. I I don't think North Carolina just completely sweeps them for the season mm-hmm. if they match up in the tournament. Yeah. I, UVA has shown their offense has just been abysmal the last few weeks of the season. Mm-hmm. They kind of fell off a cliff. Right. Pitt has moments where they look like they could be really dangerous, but they're so up and down. Yeah. They don't have enough guys that like really scare you, but they have they have like two guys that scare you, mm-hmm. and the rest are just decent. Right. I think Syracuse is a team that can surprise people. Yeah. Syracuse could potentially like get to the championship game. But they also could like drop quickly. Yeah, yeah. I I like Syracuse a lot. Okay. To me, I think North Carolina is going to run it. I think it's going to be a Duke North Carolina final. Then at that point, I think that Duke could maybe knock them off. But I just think North Carolina is just on a roll right now, and they seem to have Duke's number. So I I think the ACC is going to be a little more boring than I thought. Um, Florida State did they end up? Beating Virginia Tech, did that go final? Yeah, okay. Florida State beat. Right but, now, Wake is up on Notre Dame by like 13. Okay. Uh, yeah, the later night games are kind of interesting with NC State, Syracuse, and Boston College, Clemson. Yeah. Um, could be kind of kind of interesting. Um, Let's get the Big East out the way. I think UConn wins. <laughs> I, I don't think there's much of a – Yeah. I, I don't think Creighton is as good as them. Marquette is close when they're fully healthy, but UConn, they're just too good. I don't see anybody beating them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I think – I actually think I like – Seton Hall beat them once, I think, but I don't, I don't know if Seton Hall can make a full – I think run. I like Creighton better than Marquette. Hmm. I, I'm just down on Marquette in general, so I don't know. Respect Tyler Kolick, sir. Is he going to play? Did he – I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. It doesn't say anything about injury, so – okay. Yeah, and Cam Jones is legit, like, one of the better two guards in the country. Yeah. He's 41% from three, 16 a game. He's really good. Yeah, the middle teams are kind of interesting to me with Seton Hall, St. John's, and Villanova. I think they've yeah. all showed some signs here and there, so a little bit to watch out for. But, yeah, I, I agree. I think UConn is pretty much – should just wrap it up. Um, Arizona should win the Air, the Pac-12 tournament. I, I don't think that should take much. That conference isn't very good. They, I, they're not very good, man. I kind of like Colorado right now. I'll, you read my mind. <laughs> you read my mind. I was just about to say Colorado they're, might be the only team that has a, a chance, even though Washington State is second in the conference. Yeah. If Cody Williams plays five-star kid, mm-hmm. it's possible. Yeah. It is possible. Mm-hmm. And I do have to just mention the A-10, because right now Loyola Chicago is one of the favorites. They're the number two seed in the A-10. 
I'm rooting for Dayton. I had a friend that went there, and okay, Dayron Holmes is a beast. He's one of my favorite players in college basketball. Fair enough. Um, that could be a that could be a fun semifinal, to be honest. Yeah. Dayton and Loyola Chicago. Um, SEC, real quick. Got any ideas about the SEC? I'm going Kentucky. Okay, their their offense, man. That that win at Tennessee showed a lot. Mm-hmm. Like Rob Dillingham could never fully get it going. Yeah. And he got in foul trouble, and they were fine. Mm-hmm. Reed Shepard is being projected as a top five pick. I saw somebody. And some of it makes sense, and some of it is crazy. But I, I saw somebody put him as number one. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty. But fun. did you watch Reed Shepard play? Mm-hmm. Like, where are the flaws for a point guard? Yeah, like He's knockdown down really shooter, high level passer. Yeah. He defends, mm-hmm. which at his size, a lot of guys don't defend. Yeah, like he gives you everything. Mm-hmm. And it, Kentucky, the man, they they're impressive. Right. And they're just rolling right now. Yeah. I would say a dark horse, Florida, could be pretty good. True. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know if they get past Kentucky, but I think they can definitely get past Alabama. I like South Carolina a lot, but I don't know if they have enough to make a run. Yeah. I like and them. You know how I feel about Tennessee. I think it'd be a, a, I think it'd be fun to get Tennessee, Kentucky for another rematch. Watching Dalton Connect go That's against amazing. Reed Shepard is a lot of fun. It so. was it's it's sad seeing Dalton Connect be the only person. They yeah. can consistently get Tennessee they 40? points. They have like, 40 against yeah. Kentucky? I don't know why Rick Barnes can't recruit scores. Yeah. He had to get Dalton Connect for this to work. It's, it's strange. Yeah. Um, are we missing anything besides the Big Ten? Any major conferences? Yeah. Did I skip over anybody? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Um, the other only the only other interesting one that I was going to say is the – bring up the Mac. We could. I was going to say the Mountain West is like oh, yeah. the most oh, how did I forget? interesting. I forget that. Because we had a lot of teams. Like I think we talked about it last week. Like Colorado State was at one point ranked. And yeah, them and New Mexico State were like 21 and 22. Yeah, and, they're and six, a week later, they were both unranked. They're 6 and 7 in, in the rankings for the Mountain West. That's going to be a fun tournament to watch. Utah State, Nevada, Boise State, UNLV, San Diego State, New Mexico, Colorado State. We could have five of those teams in the tournament. Yeah. Which would be a lot of fun. But uh I think it's gonna be somewhat chalky, but I guess I wouldn't be surprised if somebody goes crazy. Um, yeah, let's talk about the Mac really quick. So then we have like five minutes to talk about the Big Ten. We're trying to f- breeze through this next week. We're gonna have our whole big show anyway. So Central is the four seed. Western is playing tonight. Is it tonight or this afternoon? Uh, Western plays tomorrow at six thirty. They're playing yeah, Ohio. They play right? Ohio tomorrow. Yeah. Um. So that should be interesting. Which means Central is playing Miami of Ohio. Is that correct? Central plays Blow Bowling Green at one thirty. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So we got Central and Western. Western is technically no good, but. They had They're a couple, 99 in conference. So. They had a couple weird wins. They beat Akron yeah. um, not too long ago. So maybe there's some outside chance. Can you believe how far Buffalo has fallen? I did not yeah, realize. I didn't see that either. <laughs> Buffalo is, a, is 4 and 27 this that year. That is a good point. Jeez. Hmm. That's good. They also have Anquan Bolden Jr. on their team. We are old, ladies and Lovely. gentlemen. Yeah. We're old. There was somebody else, another junior that I. I meant to tell you the other day, and I forgot who it was, but oh well. All right, Big Ten. What do we got? What are we thinking? We got a lot of disappointments. We got a lot of average, and we got a few good teams. Michigan playing Penn State tonight. Let's go. There's a reason why Oakland was the best team in the state this year. (laughs) And Michigan is a part of it. Michigan State Uh, might be a part of it. Long story short, uh, Michigan is disgusting. In a bad way, not a good way. Yeah. Juwan should be gone already, but Ward Manuel is being a... I'm not going to go as far as I should. He's not being a good athletic director. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep it tame. Okay. He said he still has confidence in Juwan Howard mm-hmm. after he's completely broken down the program and uh, had an outburst with the uh, strength and conditioning coach. And uh, uh, yeah. Michigan is terrible. And I hope Penn State beats them by 100. That's as much as I will say. Nice. And if that doesn't make me a fan, then it is what it then is. Then be it. <laughs> exactly. So, so be it. Right. John Beeline made me this way. 
Yeah. Forget you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Forget all of you. Um, and then tomorrow afternoon at 12 p.m., Minnesota taking on Michigan State. This is all. This is for all the marbles. We didn't Michigan even mention State. Michigan State it. lost to Indiana to end the season. Oh yeah. <laughs> By I'll, the way, did we both watch? I watched the whole game. I did not watch the whole game. I okay. watched the second half, and then the ending. Listen, that game summed up the season. Yeah, the bigs were non-existent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kalel Ware went crazy, twenty-eight and twelve, couldn't be stopped. Uh, Tyson Walker had thirty, and it didn't matter mm-hmm. because your boy AJ Hoggard was barely there. Yep. Jaden Nickens could barely hit a three. Mm-hmm. The the formula of the season all wrapped up in the game. The seniors that came back did not do much of anything this season. And Malik Hall was okay, just like he's been okay all season. He's had a pretty good season yeah. for the most part. The rest of the seniors, not so much. And if they lose to Minnesota tomorrow. Yeah. They'll be 18 and 14. There and is a chance. Maybe out of the bubble. They could be out. A chance. They still have a strong resume. People are going to take into account that they played tough teams. They have good defense, which apparently, from what I've heard. they lose tomorrow, I guarantee they still get in the first four. I would think so. But do they deserve it? I don't know. Do you agree with me that it's better that they don't make the tournament? I think so. Something needs to change. Somebody also pointed out this is the exact reason why they should not expand the tournament. Because for some reason, they're talking about expanding to 72 teams or something like that. Uh, the last Listen, last year I heard they weren't expanding. So I don't yeah. know where all these rumors are coming from. Yeah. I've heard other people say this too. Why do they, we want? They said they're not expanding anytime soon. Why do we want more mediocre teams in? But anyway. I don't know where these rumors are coming from. Whatever the rumors are, this is why we shouldn't. And uh, Minnesota it should not be scary. But for right now, Michigan State is just, they're not playing well. Listen, you know what Minnesota has? Cam Christie. Yeah. And Michigan State doesn't have a Cam Christie. Yeah. Which is the most ironic thing in the universe. It's true. Yeah. And most likely, if Michigan State wins, what will they be rewarded with, Malik? Playing Purdue. <sighs> yeah. In the second round. Yeah. Congratulations. You did it. A team that is a perfect mismatch for us, even though we, we played well against them. But yikes. So, Michigan State, good luck to you tomorrow. Uh, who do you see coming out of the Big Ten? Do you think it's just Purdue easy, or do you like your your boy? I think it's most likely Purdue easy. I pray to the basketball gods that it's Nebraska, <laughs> because my boy Casey and my boy Rink Mast, yeah, they deserve mm-hmm. to be lifting that trophy, yeah, for Cornhusker Nation. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I want Nebraska to win. Yeah, Northwestern. It would also be cool if they did, but they're they're like hurt right now. They're not fully healthy. Boo Booey is like their main guy. Yeah. Brooks Barnheiser is good too, but I don't think just them two can get it done. Yeah. I'm so, gonna go back to my preseason yeah. pick because now they've they've shown that they're back. Illinois has two guys that can go crazy and get them yeah. over the top with Thomas Domask and uh Terrence Shannon. Yeah. Even though I still feel I mean a Marcus little, Domask. Even though I still feel a little bit iffy about Terrence Shannon and all that stuff, but they've shown that they're a good team still and yeah. they're my preseason pick, so I'm gonna go back to them. I think Illinois can can knock off Purdue. Um, but Nebraska would be fun. That's for sure. Is this the worst Big Ten you've seen in your life? I think so. And maybe that's the bias of being not seeing Michigan yeah. State and Michigan. For 90% good. of our lives, we've we've been programmed to believe the Big Ten is like the toughest conference in America. Yeah. And we believed it mm-hmm. until like the past year or so. Right. But even still like – like Wisconsin's bad, Ohio State's bad, Indiana's bad. Well, like was, these Wisconsin are, is okay. They start. They started very well bad. and fell off. They're bad. They're going to be an upset <laughs> pick first round. Is, you you have a point. Next you week. Point. Next week I'm calling them out. So, um, yeah. All right. That's pretty much all we got. But yeah, I agree. Big Ten just not as good as they have been, and uh, it's kind of unfortunate. They're going to yeah. get a bunch of teams in still, but not as good as they've been in the past. Listen, shouts out to Greg Campy for. Eclipsing Michigan, yeah, for at least a year. Hey, we still got Central and Western. They maybe there's a chance, <laughs> maybe an outside chance, maybe not with Western, but maybe Central. Central has a chance. Yeah. Um. But anyway, next week the big show, two hours. We're gonna start at six p.m. I don't know if we're gonna go live or not. I have to figure out the logistics for that. Uh, my brother Jordan and Sammy Taramina are gonna be in as usual with his hot takes. Um. I'm gonna try to talk to Chris to give us his hot takes for the tournament. 
and uh, it'll be the big episode, one of the favorites of the year. So uh, with that, we'll see you next week.